Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Barnes of Northwest Hills Global Methodist Church in San Antonio, Texas. And this December, I, I want to offer four brief video messages to help you prepare for Christmas. And today I, I want to talk about focus, focusing on what Christmas is really about. You know, even in our increasingly secular society that often tries to push all thoughts of God and faith to the very margins of our lives where they don't mean much at all, well, people still like Christmas. I mean, we may not know why, but what does a modern American think about Christmas? Uh, if I go by the commercials, it's something like this. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I mean, we, we don't know why, but oh yes, it's wonderful. So, so how do we enjoy it? Well, we have to decorate. You know, there are some houses with so many lights on them that they're visible from outer space. And then there's shopping and spending and, and trying to think of what to give to people who have everything. I mean, maybe it, it does make sense to surprise someone with a Christmas beamer in the driveway with a, a red bow on top if you can. I mean, if you think, well, I, I can't get them any normal presents because they already have what they need and want because they have everything. And some of us, we also do a lot of baking or if we don't do baking, we do eating and we go to parties, which is all great except you know, there was a joke going around in November when daylight savings time was ending. It said, we need to set our clocks back an hour tonight, but don't forget to also set your scales back 15 pounds because Christmas is coming. None of which is to say that, that parties or, or presents or reefs are bad things. No, they often are good things. But the, the real thing is, the real thought is, you, you can do all of that stuff and even enjoy it, or maybe not, but still be left with the gnawing realization that if Christmas really does mean anything, it needs to mean something more. So if that's where you are this year or any year, looking for the proverbial real meaning of Christmas or for more of it, let me suggest something that may help. The Bible doesn't tell us the actual date on which Jesus was born, nor is there a specific commandment to celebrate the birth of Jesus, though when we think of what his birth is supposed to mean and remember the angels and shepherds and wise men, it does make sense to, to not let the day pass like any other. I mean, at least sing a Christmas carol or eat some fruitcake or, or do something Christmassy. And so it's, it's not surprising that we have records going back at least to the end of the second century of the earliest Christians sort of organically celebrating the birth of Jesus even if the name Christmas and the date December 25th wasn't settled on yet. Well, along with that, and this is what I really want you to think about, by the late 5th century, serious, devout Christians also began to observe a period of time which now lasts for four Sundays before Christmas, during which they prepared themselves to celebrate the birth of Christ and all that it means. And they did that not necessarily by celebrating like we do, but by seriously reflecting on our need for a savior so that we appreciate a little better what we say we believe about Jesus. To put it another way, there is a, a rhythm that some Christians observe where before a, a great celebration like Christmas or Easter, they actually fast. And then when the, the great holy day arrives, they feast. So before Easter, many Christians observe Lent, where you know they, they give things up or they fast. And before Christmas, that period of time is marked by the four Sundays that we call Advent. And you may not like the idea of taking this season in December seriously. You may just want to go to Christmas parties, but hey, if you observe Advent, at least you can save yourself from having to set your scales back a full 15 pounds and it could be good for your soul as well. So what do we do with this Advent concept? May I suggest there are two ways to celebrate Christmas in America. And if our lives are to be meaningful but not needlessly weird, most of us may want to do some of both. So popular American culture will say, after Thanksgiving, do all the happy, happy Christmas stuff and run the gauntlet of stores and parties until Christmas Day arrives, and then you see family and friends for about a week, and somewhere around New Year's, it's over. 
that's not evil. But may I suggest if you would follow Christ this December in the run-up to Christmas, also spend some time seriously looking at the world without looking away and try to see and, and feel just why we need a Savior. And then maybe try intentionally to see people around you and their needs and maybe, I say maybe, do some giving to people who aren't on your Christmas list. You can be spontaneous. You know, Jesus did say that giving stuff is even more blessed than receiving. I think even receiving a beamer, though how would I know and I don't want one. And then finally, look at your own soul and your own wounds and your own sins and your own struggles, some of which might feel as if you could never overcome them. And then remind yourself, there is a rumor that some sort of savior was born. And even though that was 2,000 years ago, wise men and wise women still seek him. And those who seek do find. Think of it this way. Many of us remember being small and waiting for the promise of Santa Claus's yearly visit. Well, at Christmas, we remember that there is a greater than Santa. In fact, the original St. Nicholas, who was born, we think, in 270 AD in what is today the nation of Turkey, was a follower of the one who was greater than him. And you can be too. And that is what Christmas is all about. So would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, during this next month, which is so busy, so exciting, sometimes so stressful, so many things, we pray that you would help us to make time for you, though maybe that's a choice we have to make. And we pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would speak to each of our hearts some new word or some old word that we really need. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem and died at Calvary and rose again. Amen. Well, thank you for, for listening. And next week, I'm just going to share a few thoughts about getting and giving.